Greetings Indie Warriors and welcome to I Dream of Indie. My name's Old Gamer Joe, bringing you another review today as we look at Knights and Guns on the Nintendo Switch. I am someone who has always had a fascination with knights, historic castles, all of that stuff. I absolutely love medieval settings, I guess you could say. And combine that with guns? I was pretty excited about this game actually. It looked a lot of fun. I wasn't quite sold on the whole shooting in one direction, only being able to shoot upward thing. But as I played more and more of the game, I realized, yeah, it kind of works. Knights and Guns features two main modes of gameplay. You can play the game solo or with a co-op local partner. There is no online play in the game whatsoever. With some very basic arcade style controls when you're playing docked, you also have the option of some handheld controls for when you want to play the game handheld. You have a fire button, of course. You can only shoot up like I mentioned. You can jump, you can dash, you can reload, and then you have a special attack which involves slamming a hammer into the ground and unleashing a devastating screen filling attack. In the game's campaign mode, which is the main meat of this title, there is actually a little bit of storyline here, which involves a peaceful village that is suddenly invaded by a horde of monsters. However, these monsters do leave some guns behind, and that's where the knights come in, they grab up the guns, and they try to fight off the monsters. The first thing you're going to notice in the campaign mode is that this map is massive, and you can kind of go off in different directions and choose your own way. The game even tells you right out of the gate that you can complete the game without filling out the map entirely. But to get the most out of it, you'll want to go to each individual individual square, which could theoretically take you a long, long time. Once you've decided on a quest to embark on, you're usually going to be doing one of two things, fighting off waves of enemies or trying to survive for as long as possible. But either way, the goal mostly remains the same, to not die and to kill or survive for as long as you can. There is quite a bit of weapon variety in the game, which I really enjoyed. Some of the levels will allow for you to spend some gold in order to purchase better weapons that will help you defeat the enemies in that level, and some levels will force you to use specific weapons and you don't have other options. This does add a little bit of an element of strategy to the game as you will have to carefully choose how to spend your gold as there are upgrades and other fun unlockables, quite a few actually, that you can purchase with that gold. You can either buy new armors that will increase or decrease specific statistics about your character, or you can buy some of the music in the game or some scrolls, some artwork, that kind of thing as well. You can also purchase some potions which help to fill up that special attack that I mentioned earlier, or you can purchase hearts which act as lives. If you run out of lives, it's going to be a game over, which isn't the end of the world. You just get to try the level again or quit out of the level. But if you have lives, you can respawn on the spot and get right back into the action without having to restart the entire level. So the map is huge, like I mentioned, and a lot of these levels do put up a good challenge. But the game is really fun, and I like the gold system especially. I enjoyed that certain treasure chests were on this map, and in order to unlock those, you might have to purchase or find keys across the map to get some of the better loot in the game. The game also features really good enemy variety. I was surprised at how many new enemies would appear the further I got into the map, and the game makes a pretty big deal about it with a fun little cutscene that shows off that enemy. Most of them also have unique attacks that you'll have to learn. It's funny because you would think shooting upward things would be kind of frustrating, but actually these enemies in this game like to bounce and hop a lot, so they give you plenty of opportunities to juggle them in the air, and the weapon variety makes it a lot of fun too. I will say that while the controls were responsible, responsive enough and the game puts up a pretty good challenge, the dash feature was something that I probably didn't utilize as much as the developer was perhaps intending me to, so I didn't find that very helpful, but overall the game feels pretty good. It's just frantic arcade action and I like the way that the enemies were designed to only be shot in an upward direction. I will say this though, I played the game both single player and co-op and the co-op experience, while is labeled as being a little bit more challenging because of the fact that you have two characters now, was the more enjoyable of those two. In single player, it does get a little stale after a while, so this isn't a game that I would necessarily sit there single player and play for like three hours straight, but it was fun to dip in and dip out of still. I just feel like co-op is the way to go if you have that option, if you have a local friend or something like that. The game was far more enjoyable. I think a lot of that enjoyment comes from the presentation of this game. It has a wonderful cartoon aesthetic, some really great background variety as well, from desert areas to spooky castles and that kind of thing. All sorts of different types of levels in this game and lots to be unlocked as well in the endless mode, which are recycled from the campaign, but still, there's enough variety here in the enemy designs. I think they all look really kind of, well, I guess you could say almost gross. A lot of these enemies will explode into smaller forms of that same enemy 
enemy, which I thought was a nice touch. The animations were fluid throughout. I did run into a few slowdowns on the Nintendo Switch when the screen really fills up, the console just can't seem to handle that all that well. Also, because this screen can fill up with so many enemies, I didn't really enjoy the handheld mode all that much. Just playing on a tinier screen isn't ideal when you have tons and tons of enemies coming at you. The bigger the screen for this game, the better in my opinion, but it ran just fine. Those aforementioned slowdowns weren't all that frequent, so it wasn't a big deal, but I did think it was worth mentioning. Overall, too, the sound design in this game is really great. You have a narrator for the world map in the campaign mode who has the nice cackle to him. I really enjoyed the voice act here. Even in the cutscenes, it's pretty well done. It goes along with the theme of this game well. And the soundtrack, it's actually really great. There's some metal licks here, so if you're a fan of metal music, you'll really enjoy this one. Some of it is Celtic sounding in nature, some of it is more doom metal-ish, and I really enjoyed all of it as someone who appreciates metal. I don't listen to it on a daily basis, but when I do hear it in a video game, it can fire me up a bit, and I enjoy it. Overall, Knights and Guns offers great value. There is a lot of content in this game, a big campaign to go through. If you want to see and do everything, it's going to take you a long time, and it's definitely fun if you have a co-op partner with you. As a single player experience, I personally didn't think the game was as fun, but it was still an enjoyable enough romp. Ultimately, this game is a really basic, simple concept that has a lot of great content built around it, and it's an enjoyable experience. I recommend this one if you're a fan of shooters. You'll get over the shooting upward thing pretty quickly. Great sound design here, wonderful artistic direction, a really Really solid addition to the Nintendo Switch. Thanks so much for watching the latest video from I Dream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to pay tribute to our great indie warriors. Mitchell Hall, Bunny, Kevalo, Bill Tikas, Christian Cruz, Strict9, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Peach, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, Sig Coil, Skepticism, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Julian Colbus, and JRS the 8th. Thank you so much for all you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else, please head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.